If you think that taking vitamin D supplement daily keeps you safe, you might be dead wrong. Harvard found that nearly 40% of adults are still deficient even while supplementing. That means weaker bones, faster aging, and even higher cancer risk. Why? Because of the six common mistakes silently blocking your body's ability to utilize vitamin D. And this gets worse as you age. And here's the kicker, one of these mistakes come from sunshine itself, the very thing we are told to rely on. In this video, I'll show you the biggest mistakes and the simple fixes that can multiply your vitamin D power by 300%. So you finally get the benefits you're paying for. And most importantly, you're not vitamin D deficient while thinking you're vitamin D sufficient. Why you may be deficient despite supplementing with the recommended dose? The first problem was exposed by this 2022 study. It shows, I'm quoting, variability in response to vitamin D supplementation according to vitamin D metabolism-related gene polymorphism in healthy adults. Gene polymorphism is a variation in your genes, and this means that your genes actually may change your current ideal dose of vitamin D. But you wouldn't know about it if you just take the recommended dose. In other words, you may think that you're supplementing with the right dose today, but you still be deficient despite knowing all the research about vitamin D, all the benefits, you're still missing out. This gets worse with age, as I'll show you today, because the ideal vitamin D dose that worked for you 10 years ago may not work for you today. Now, why would that happen? Let's analyze the core issue and then follow with the mistakes and how to fix them quickly today. And now, vitamin D secret with how do you take vitamin D correctly. So let's speak about the metabolites. How do we get vitamin D? It's produced by the skin or when you take a supplement, right? Because you take this supplement, you don't take hydroxy vitamin D supplement, you don't take Castro supplement, you take vitamin D. So these are the two sources. Then the liver is going to convert vitamin D into hydroxy vitamin D. Then this becomes Castro which is the active hormone. And what converts hydroxy vitamin D to concentrate is actually the kidneys. Now, this process, what you see here is very, very important. All the benefits of vitamin D will come from these two. They don't come from vitamin D. Vitamin D is actually dormant on its own. It doesn't do much. So you have heard that vitamin D is a pro-hormone. And it is because it becomes a hormone which is called a trial. Most of the cancer protection actually comes from called a trial. All the things about immune system, hydroxy vitamin D and called a trial not from vitamin D. Do you understand? Vitamin D doesn't give you the benefits. It's these two that give you the benefits. And when you take vitamin tests, what do you think they measure? They don't measure vitamin D. When you take vitamin D tests, they measure hydroxy vitamin D. So you actually measure the one-step conversion for vitamin D. That's very important. You, you measure this, not this. Once you understand that, now we can think about the conversion and we think about the doses and what we should see in the blood test because we don't do blood tests for, for cancer trial. And that becomes very problematic as we age because this conversion goes down as we age. So what happens when we age? How does that change our ideal vitamin D dose from supplement? This study from 2017 found, I'm quoting, during aging, vitamin D metabolism and activity change in several ways. The number of vitamin D receptors decreases in several organs involving calcium metabolism, and the activity of the enzyme that converts vitamin D into calcium trial decreases, mainly due to reduced kidney function, which limits vitamin D activation. In other words, the vitamin D dose that worked for you 10 years ago may not work for you today. As you age, your kidneys make less of the active form of vitamin D, the calcium trial, and vitamin D blood tests don't measure this. On top of that, your body's tissues respond less effectively to the cancer trial that you do have. So together, you think you're taking the correct dose, but you're not. So the dose that put you in ideal dose a few years back may be insufficient today. So this is why following fixed dosages is, isn't right and ignoring age-related changes. What's the ideal dose of vitamin D levels? 5,000 units? Wrong. 4,000 units? Wrong. The same amount throughout your life? Wrong. Now, let's speak about six common deficiency dangers with vitamin D. While learning about the exact steps to optimize it to give you the true protection that you need. So, mistake number one is following fixed dosages without testing. Ideal blood tests. These blood tests are based on the research that show the most benefit to cancer. Between 20 to 65, healthy ranges between 50 to 70. Over age 65, 60 to 81 because you're not gonna convert as well to cost a trial. So we need a bit higher, very important. 
that the older you are, you may need higher blood levels because you're going to convert less into cough or trial. Instead, we need to fine tune our dose based on genetics, age, sun exposure, and even the color of our skin. So the bottom line is this, take 4,000 to 5,000 units per day without worry. Then retest your vitamin levels. And if you're too low, below 40 or 50 in your blood tests, increase the dose until you find your genetic sweet spot because everyone is affected a bit differently by the dose. What matters is the end result in the blood test. And the mistake number two is ignoring these age-related issues, assuming that we need the same amount of vitamin D throughout our lifetime. As we age, as the conversion from vitamin D to 25-hydroxy vitamin D and to cause the goes down, we need to increase the dose. In fact, most people gain fat as they age, which further increases vitamin D requirement. Let's hear Dr. Peter Ortia speak about that. You take two individuals that have the same amount of, you know, sun exposure and other factors. One of them has much more adipose tissue than the other. They're going to have lower vitamin D, all things equal, because they are sequestering more of the vitamin D in their fat cells. So obesity right off the bat is a potential risk factor that drives low vitamin D. Mistake number three is assuming that any sun exposure is going to produce vitamin D on our skin. When we speak about sunlight, we speak about production by the skin. When we speak of supplements, we speak about units that you consume. Let's hear Dr. Peter Tia speak about that. Those who have more naturally occurring melanin have more built-in protection from UV radiation, which means less UV conversion for vitamin D. So darker skinned people are going to have lower vitamin D levels. The lighter you are, the faster you're going to make vitamin D. So if you take Afro-Americans, they live in New York, they're going to get very little vitamin D. They need to take supplement. You need UVB to make vitamin D. You need direct sunlight in the most intense period of the sun on the sky, usually between 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. If it's not direct sun, a lot of the times it's going to filter vitamin D. Yeah, the secret is the, the shadow. If your shadow is taller than you, you don't get vitamin D. If your shadow is tall, that's an interesting tip. But getting sunshine between 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in most countries isn't enough. Because in most countries, these hours will produce vitamin D levels in direct sunshine only in about six months of the year. Let me explain. This usually happens in most countries during the summer and the late spring. In the U.S., for example, most states, they only get vitamin D between April to October. In November, you cannot get vitamin D. In uh, Florida, probably from March until November, you can get vitamin D because you have the sun is, is higher in the sky for longer. Then in Canada, depends where exactly, but you can make vitamin D only from May to September. So May to September, you have the option, if you want, to produce vitamin D via the skin. You don't have to, you can continue to take the supplement and forget about it. When you dry, do you actually get vitamin D? Let's go into some of these tips. You have to understand a lot of things, they block UVB. If you are in, in your car, and you have sunshine, it's not going to make vitamin D because the, the screen is going to block the UVB. Another cool tip, we take a shower maybe after we go to the beach. Do not soap your body. It's a fat-soluble vitamin. The soap is going to remove that. So you need like an hour or so, let the vitamin D penetrate the, the body. This sun exposure topic leads me to the fourth major danger with vitamin D deficiency. Overdependence on the sun. What is better? You get the vitamin D from the sun or to get vitamin D by a supplement? This is a big question. In the natural health community, they all agree it's better to get it from the sun. I have seen no evidence of that. Now, this is my perspective. We have to separate sunlight from direct sun to get vitamin D. Sunlight, there is no doubt, is great for you. It relaxes the body, benefits your eyes. Your eyes are actually going to be healthier if you're going to expose them to sunlight. It boosts your mood. We spoke about depression. Vitamin D and sunlight boost mood. It regulates your circadian rhythm, the inner clock that you have, sunlight, and improves sleep. Even with all the synthetic lights that we have, the happy lights, nothing beats sunlight. Sunlight is the best for that. But vitamin D is not satisfied with just sunlight. It wants you to get direct, strong summer sun that causes DNA damage. The biggest problem for me with vitamin D from the sun is that you need to expose your body when you're going to get the most amount of DNA damage. And we know it definitely drives aging, especially aging of the skin. Direct sunlight is pretty strong. So my perspective is until I'm going to see absolute evidence that vitamin D from the sun is much better 
then the vitamin D that you take orally. My suggestion is to be more dependent on supplements, especially as you age, because what happens when you age, your body will have more difficulties to repair DNA damage from the sun. I would not want to test my body's ability to repair my DNA. So I, I suggest if you do expose your body, go for 10 to 20 minutes max. This is my perspective. I could be wrong. Uh, because I care about longevity and I know that DNA damage accelerates aging. I mean, it, there is absolutely no doubt about that. I mean, there is no doubt. So these are my recommendations. Get sunlight for its benefits, but rely on supplementation for vitamin D. I limit sun exposure to 15 to 20 minutes to reduce DNA damage. If you go in, in the winter, you're just going to get DNA damage. You're not going to get any vitamin D, any other. As you have seen, getting direct sun that actually produces vitamin D may pose a deficiency risk which makes a cheap supplement an attractive choice. What's the recommended dose of vitamin D supplement? Regarding these doses, if your doctor tells you to take less of a dose or your tests are too high, always go with your doctor. These are the average ideal dosage. 25, probably 4,000 units per day is sufficient. What happens when you age, you, you make less by the skin, and you convert less, so suddenly you need to take more. Over age 60, conversion would go down. And on average, we need somewhere between 5,000 to 7,000 units per day. Based on testing, of course. Age 60, probably 6,000 units per day. Age 75, now we need to go to 8,000 units. And now the blood test may actually underestimate your actual need because the blood tests only show you hydroxyvitamin D. So you need to, to take the test with a discount. You need to discount. You need to assume that the body doesn't convert it as well to calcium trial and a lot of the benefits come from calcium trial. So we have to change based on the age, but also seasonal adjustments. Now that we have established the average ideal doses, let's continue with deficiency risks. This leads us to the fifth deficiency risk with vitamin D, taking vitamin D too. All the benefits we mentioned are connected to vitamin D3, not vitamin D2. So please look at the label before you buy a product. Let's move to risk number five, having vitamin D deficiency because you're afraid of high doses, even if your current dose doesn't optimize your vitamin D levels in your blood. Believe it or not, some of my clients needed 20 to 25,000 units of vitamin D per day to achieve the optimal vitamin D levels in the blood. Can you get toxicity? It seems not, according to studies. And it makes sense. Paleontologists' research found that our race, the human race, developed in Africa before conquering the entire planet. And in Africa, our ancestors had a very strong sunshine every day with very little clothes on. This sunshine exposure causes the body to make 25,000 units within 30 minutes to 2 hours of direct exposure. Therefore, I find it difficult to believe our body cannot handle 25,000 units per day. And studies show the same, that at some point the body manages to level the vitamin D levels in the blood. It's not a medical recommendation, but what I would do is put the 25,000 units per day at the upper range. Above that, we can expect toxicity. If you decide to take vitamin D supplement, which cool tips should you know? Like with a lot of these supplements, people recommend to kind of cycle off and cycle on and just don't do them the whole time. So it's not about cycling as much as making sure you have plenty of vitamin D and you can do that by not taking it every day, but actually taking a higher dose. You can actually take it in a bolus. When I researched my wife's stroke, vitamin D improved stroke recovery. They've done two studies. One, they gave stroke patients 5,000 units per day. Another group received 50,000 vitamin D in one capsule once to cover the two weeks. Both groups improved exactly the same. So what does it tell you? It tells you that the body accumulates vitamin D, the liver accumulates vitamin D, it accumulates in the blood. And this means that if you don't want to take it every day, you can actually take it once in a while if you ever it out based on the daily doses. So a 50,000 is going to cover you for 10 days, if indeed this is the dose that you need. I like to think in terms of weekly dose. Based on my tests, I need 30,000 units per week. This means that I can just take three 10,000 unit capsules once a week with a fatty meal, and that's it. It gives you options to simplify your lifestyle. Maybe you take too many pills, you want to take a supplement once every two weeks, 
No problem. It's quite consistent in, in the human studies. Also, it's good like to recover a deficiency quickly. So if you are very deficient, you just take a bolus and give your body what it needs. Yeah. yeah. Interestingly, you can take vitamin D on empty stomach, even though it's a fat soluble pro hormone. And your body has system to absorb it even without fat. Of course, test that. Let's do a summary of the practical guidelines I'm recommending to my clients, not to you personally. Nothing I say here is a medical advice or a personal recommendation. Practical steps start to four to 5,000 per day, then tests after two months. So you want to see if four to 5,000 per day, how much your body converts. You take that just after two months. If it's lower than 40, then you need to increase the dosage. If it's higher than 70, reduce the dosage. If you're over 60, I recommend combining it with a vitamin K2 and optimize sun exposure. In my opinion, the older you are, you're going to make less vitamin D and you're going to cause more DNA damage. I would tend to be more uh, supplement dependent as I age. The six ways vitamin D deficiency is sabotaging your health today. But in our next video, we'll uncover the silent two partners vitamin D cannot work without. Hint, one is a critical mineral that activates it every step of the way.